Our world is rife with mysteries and enigmas. Through the years, a myriad of wondrous events have occurred and thousands of amazing discoveries have been made. We can never be quite sure what lies beyond the horizon. Between archaeological wonders and the rapid development of technology, there is an unbound potential for our future. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at recent discoveries. China's acoustic probe heard sound from the Mariana Trench. Have you ever wondered how much we can hear in the depth of the oceans? Well, in 2017, a team of scientists from China conducted China's first acoustic test in the Mariana Trench, quite literally the deepest part of our oceans. The research team from Northwestern Polytechnical University in Shanxi province carried out this experiment in deep water sound communication in a small valley known as Challenger Deep, in the southern end of the Mariana Trench, approximately 11 kilometers under the surface. A 10-kilometer acoustic probe, fitted with sensors capable of detecting sounds 9.3 kilometers away, was stationed in the area. This was the first acoustic test carried out here by a Chinese team, and the second ever conducted, though the Mariana Trench has had many visitors over the years, including both manned and unmanned trips beginning with the U.S. submersible trip in 1960. The Mariana Trench, or more specifically Challenger Deep, is approximately 320 kilometers southwest from Guam. Understanding the role of sound under the sea is vital in understanding more about marine life and could have military applications too. With the absence of light at such deep levels underwater, a key component to communication and navigation between sea creatures are the noises made. But a research possibility with greater potential is that by understanding the underwater acoustic characteristics we can expect to hear, we can give this technology a role in the military. If we are able to conduct a great deal of deep-sea acoustic research, we can apply this to the development of sonar technology, in turn facilitating better anti-submarine and warfare equipment and abilities. The research team left six acoustic sensors in the Mariana Trench, so that information on ambient noise or the background, subtle sounds, can be gathered and data can be obtained for a year. The sensors were retrieved a year later, in the November of 2018. This year-long data collection involved researchers from the Ocean University of China and the Institute of Acoustics and the Chinese Academy of Sciences. This research has a number of benefits and is incredibly fascinating, from more advanced technology to better understanding marine life. The focus on deep-sea scientific exploration is not short-lived and was listed in 2020 by Beijing as a key project in an upcoming five-year plan. Fortune-telling artificial intelligence Despite how quickly technological developments are advancing our society, two things have seemed universally impossible – time travel and seeing the future. However, the day may come where both of these dreams become a reality, as the United States military has been working on a way to perform the latter option. The most powerful militaries of the world have all recently been diving into the possibilities that artificial intelligence can offer. Whether it be saving lives by removing soldiers from combat or increasing the accuracy of assignments, and the US military seems to be taking the potential job of AI one step further with its newly developed system. The experimental network, which is still in the testing stages, uses a series of tests run by artificial intelligence to describe potential events that might be noteworthy before they even occur. The tests are referred to as the Global Information Dominance Experiments, or GUIDE, as they rely on combined data from a wide variety of sources, including satellites, inputted intelligence reports, sensors, radar, and any other systems or information which it might require to evaluate the situation. These information sources are available for the AI program to consolidate from the cloud, meaning that there are no limits to where it gets its information from. Military leaders involved with the development of GUIDE 
hope that it can be used as a tool to promote world peace and decrease the loss of life through military attacks and conflicts. U.S. Air Force General Glenn Van Herc elaborated on this during a press conference discussing the new technology, saying that it embodies a fundamental change in how we use information and data to increase decision space for leaders from the tactical level to the strategic level, not only military leaders, but it also gives opportunity for our civilian leaders. Essentially, the system will be observing information and analyzing it so that it can provide the anticipated moves of opposing military forces which will allow the US to put countermeasures into effect that will prevent against or reduce hostilities. As the AI system learns and predicts future movements, more proactive decisions could be made by the US military leaders in the Pentagon. Although this all sounds incredibly fantastical and mystical, the principles behind the program are rather simple. The guide will analyze raw data as it is occurring, such as the number of cars coming and going from a military base, submarines leaving ports, or the changing patterns of aircraft, and assimilate this information into a prediction about events that will occur days in advance. It is essentially the same principles that are used by top military analysts already, but human analysts can take days to comb through this same data and arrive at a prediction, and by then, the information always runs the risk of being outdated or no longer relevant. Although there are still some kinks to work out, it seems that the guide's artificial intelligence systems can arrive at a more accurate prediction or conclusion in a matter of seconds. It remains to be seen whether the capabilities of artificial intelligence can really be applied to the discernment of the future. But it seems that guide could do great things for military strategy and improving analysis, whether or not it sees widespread use. Half of Viking invaders may have been women. Popular lore depicts the infamous Viking invaders as brutish, impossibly strong men with flowing beards and bulging biceps. And while these men certainly existed, it seems that at least half of their number may have actually been women. Researchers who were studying the graves and bones of ancient Viking warriors had previously assumed that if there were weapons buried with the individual, denoting that they were a warrior, the individual was male. However, the University of Western Australia employed bone analysis on the bones of 14 Viking bodies and discovered that at least six of the 14 were women, with one unable to be determined. One of the women was even buried alongside a powerful-looking sword and shield that confirmed her status as a well-respected warrior. However, it's worth noting that, although this discovery is forcing researchers to reshape their theories that all of the Vikings that migrated from Scandinavia to England were male, it does not necessarily confirm that up to half of the Viking army itself was made up of females. Most of the female Vikings who were buried with weapons were also found to have oval brooches that were used to hold up aprons, indicating that many of the women might not have been warriors actively fighting in the Viking army but rather women who travelled with the invaders to cook and clean and take care of the men. However, despite the fact that there might not have been absolute equality on the battlefield itself, the research and analysis of the graves following the surprising revelation of gender has confirmed that many women undoubtedly did in fact wield swords and wear armour. Some researchers hypothesise that the women, brave and unafraid of the danger, may have accompanied their husbands and sons on the treacherous migration into England and been prepared to fight alongside them as the need arose. The published study of the sexes of the Viking bones confirmed that, although the results presented here cannot be used to determine the number of female settlers, they do suggest that the ratio of females to males may have been somewhere between a third to roughly equal. This study revealing these surprising results has already revolutionized certain aspects of archaeology, particularly how researchers and archaeologists view and study burial locations and grave sites. Where previously they were content to identify remains by the contents of their graves, for example, whether there were oval apron brooches present indicating a female or a sword present to indicate a male, now it is clear that researchers will have to revamp the way that they determine gender as well as guard against making future assumptions. While some ancient cultures definitively had no place for women beyond the hearth, this is clearly not the case with the Viking cultures, and archaeologists now must be careful to use osteological signs of gender within the bones themselves, rather than surrounding artifacts, to determine the gender of the person lying in the grave. Mystery 
mutant daddy shortlegs created in a lab. Harvestmen are a type of common arachnid in the order of Apilions, known for their strange, flexible legs that are vastly disproportionate to their bodies and are better known by their household name, Daddy Longlegs. However, that name is a misnomer for the new model, so to speak, of the Daddy Longlegs that scientists have recently created in a lab. The researchers mapped the entire genome of the largest species of Daddy Longlegs, Phalangium opilio, and were able to isolate the very genes that caused the elongated legs which make the spiders so distinctive. They were then able to suppress those genes in the embryos of developing daddy long legs, resulting in creatures which are now better termed to the nickname daddy short legs, as they were missing the extended appendages which the species is so well known for. And while it may seem that these strange experiments might just be all for fun and games, the lead author of the study of the experiments, Guillaume Guenet, said in an interview with Live Science that our purpose was not just to shorten their legs just for the sake of it. We wanted to understand more about how these fascinating creatures evolved their alien way of locomotion and body plan. It turns out that daddy long legs have very strange walking patterns when compared with true spiders, as they only use three pairs for actually walking and treat the longest pair as feelers, which they wave around to find their way. And turning off these long legs genes results in an entire shape change for three of their pairs of legs. When the hox genes are down-regulated, these leg appendages transform into short food-manipulating appendages called pedipalps, explained Genet. Pedipalps have fewer leg segments and special flexible joints, which is quite a change from the legs that Daddy Long Legs are so well known for. Interestingly, the fourth pair of feeler legs remained, resulting in strange-looking specimens that only lived for a short time, meaning that the so-called Daddy Short Legs could not be a viable species. The gene patterns and expressions displayed in the daddy long legs are able to be better understood as a result of these experiments, and analyzing the linkages between the genes can help to create an evolutionary map of sorts for this incredible species, which has been around an astonishingly 400 million years. Looking at the possible cause of evolution can provide a small glimpse into far distant history and it is the hope that future studies can be conducted with other species that can help describe how certain unique features came to be. This LA startup is building tiny injectable robots to attack tumors. A medical miracle has been achieved in Los Angeles, California. Doctors have managed to create a microscopic mechanism that can be loaded with cancer-killing chemicals that can be injected straight into a tumor. This precise method could potentially save millions of lives and families. The tiny injectable robots work as a vehicle for the chemicals used to break down cancerous formations. Since these chemicals can be highly destructive, it is important to avoid contacting healthy cells with these chemicals. These microscopic injectable vehicles make this possible. The device is roughly the size of a breadcrumb and uses magnetic forces to steer through the body. Doctors on the outside intend to direct the machine to the source of a cancer hotspot and deliver the precise amount of antidote. This discovery could very well be a revolution to modern-day science as we know it. It has only been used so far to treat cancer, but the possibilities for the future are endless. What was once a seeming science fiction fairy tale is now being tested in hospitals around the globe. While it has not been used on the general public yet, it is moving to clinical trials in 2023 and is showing a lot of promise. The now famous Bionaut Labs have been able to take credit for their invention. Michael Spiegelmarker and Aviad Mazels are the co-founders of Bionaut Labs. Together they created the company in 2016 with a mission in mind and they have not let up since. The company was founded with this sole intention in mind dubbing themselves a remote-control medical micro-robot startup. They very well may be the first company to see the technology used to treat everyday patients. The Trailblazers were granted $20 million in venture capital funding and employed technicians with previous experience in microscopic robotics and other precision manufacturing. They recognized the potential of their idea when studying the technique of current cancer treatment methods. They found that most drug treatment is facilitated through diffusion within the bloodstream. 
This creates a litany of complications as it requires a high dose to maintain its composition for delivery to the afflicted area. Not only that, but it also means that the entire body must feel the effects of the chemical pumping through their bloodstream. Spiegelmacher realized the pitfall of this method and stated, we wanted to just figure out a way to get there, to the afflicted area, instead of flooding a body with therapeutics. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.